With COP21 ending on the 11th of December in Paris today and uh, the well-attended Afri City Summit in Johannesburg recently ended just a week earlier, it is a good time to reflect on the role of the city of Johannesburg and the role that it's played in these two international events. And of course, as we head up to the World Economic Forum in Davos, it's just around the corner. What are the expectations and the role that the city of Johannesburg can play on that forum too? Well, a warm welcome to the CNBC Africa special. My name is Kukule Tutele, and my guest today is Johannesburg Executive Mayor, Mayor Parks Dow. Now, let's jump right straight into things, uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the recent Afri City Summit that was held here in the city of Johannesburg, many deem it as a significant success, but walk us through the major milestones as well as the resolutions that were decided on during the event. Well, thank you very much, Kukule. You know, AfriCities was focusing on translating the important international agreements into action. It was about implementation. If you think about it, 2015 has been a very busy year from an international agreements point of view. Mm. The first conference on financing for development that took place in Addis Ababa, where the world agreed on mechanisms to finance development, particularly in developing countries, and made provision for financing local authorities in uh, what we, of course, euphemistically call paragraph 34, uh, that deals specifically with financing local authorities, uh, then succeeded by uh, the Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the United Nations General Assembly and currently COP21 and all these important agreements are dealing with how to deal with the challenges that face the world but for us most important is about the role that local authorities would play so uh, when we met at Africa at Afri cities our focus was about implementation about translating uh, all these ac agreements into actual practical actions and what instruments do we put in place to support our local authorities throughout the African continent to implement these these agreements. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, perhaps if you can indulge us in some of these agreements that the city of Johannesburg has with the other major uh, uh, urban areas across the continent, what do they entail? Do they entail boosting trade, uh, exchange of ideas and potential skills? Uh, and what does it mean overall for the global theme regarding intra-African trade and integration? Well, one of the sessions that we had at uh, AfriCity is focused on what uh, mega African cities can do. Uh, we convened a session that deals with the metropolis centers of uh, Africa, how we can facilitate trade, investment, logistics, how we can enable uh, partnerships between our local authorities, partnerships between our universities, partnerships between our enterprises so that we create the, the cities as the centers that facilitate the trade. We all complain about the fact that intra-Africa trade is not enough mm. and this was an opportunity for us to sit down and say what do we do in our respective cities and how do we build relationships. So it was a multilateral approach to dealing with trade amongst the cities. Uh, and facilitating that we build the capacity of our cities to support the enterprises. But we also have bilateral agreements between various cities. Uh, we're working very closely with the city of Dakar. We're uh, working very closely with the city of Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. We're currently in discussions with Lagos. And those are about bilateral agreements that we reach with cities about uh, supporting each other's cities, best practice between cities. It is also about uh, facilitating trade and investment, but also about people-to-people -people interaction. We don't mm. have enough people-to-people -people interaction on the African continent. We kind of don't facil facilitate uh, exchange of students enough amongst our universities, and those are things that we think are important because, in fact, if you talk about universities, the universities have a provision of a percentage of students that should come from sub-Saharan Africa. But you, have to, you can better facilitate that through the exchange of students between the universities. Mm. During the AfriCity Summit, we also had the pleasure as CNBC Africa to sit down with uh, Madame Savet Gibson, who's the mayor of Painesville in Liberia. And uh, naturally, we walked through some of the issues that they deal with, being uh, the Ebola crisis that they had to fight through. And she mentioned that water and sanitation and in access to these basic infrastructural developments were part of the challenges that she experienced as a mayor within her uh, municipal area. Are there lessons that as a city of Johannesburg, we can share 
with uh, some cities that go through these challenges, given the fact that our water infrastructure, sanitation as well, is uh, probably one of the leaders on the continent, Mr. Mayor? Well, in fact, internationally, we have one of the best water distribution systems internationally. We provide potable water. You can literally drink your water from a tap. There mm. are many countries internationally where you don't drink water from a tap. And the reality is about developing a system, a comprehensive system that facilitates the production of water. So the South African system works on the basis of production. And on the basis of the production, you have a distribution network, and then you have a retail network. And we, at the end of the value chain, is municipalities. But you have to ensure that there's treatment of the water system along the value chain, and that all players in the value chain are able to play their part. We recently faced crisis at the level of the distribution networks, uh, but we were able to mitigate it uh, with a degree of ease. I mean, it was a week in which there was anxiety, but. In reality, as the city of Johannesburg, we're able to guarantee supply to more than 95% of the people of Johannesburg. And that had to do with the storage capacity that we'd, put, that we'd built into the network, the uh, linkages of the, of the network so that it's able to complement each other. And that ensured that we're able to guarantee reliability of supply. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it is also about addressing issues on the demand side. We've been investing in reducing unaccounted for water in the city of Johannesburg and ensuring that we reduce demand on the water system. And when you reduce demand, you're able to protect yourself against uh, the shocks that come with heat waves, El Nino, and other water su supply challenges. So we're able to intervene from that point of view and build a different relationship with consumers. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, talking about consumers, it is about the ability to mobilize people and say, we're in a period that requires water savings. Please come on board. And the people of Johannesburg came on board. They assisted us to mitigate the pressure that we're having and we're able to assist rent water. And in that regard, I think that uh, it is those sort of partnerships that work. But the reality is that we have to accept that we're in a unique pos position because we're able to provide portable, clean drinking water from the tap. But we need to preserve that. And one of the things that we're now looking at is to introduce systems of preserving water so that we're able to use rainwater harvesting for gardening purposes so that you're able to preserve the water. Uh, we introducing technologies such as uh, reducing the size of the cisterns that we have mm. in the city of Johannesburg. We're currently using nine liter cisterns. We're trying to reduce that to six liter cisterns. That gives us a three liter saving of water in the systems that we use. Sure. And, and these are intended to be mechanisms that enable us to reduce the demand on water uh, and to, to use, utilize the resource more judiciously. Because if you're able to do that, you can then invest the resources in other areas. Mm. Sounds like a very strategic plan for maintaining the focus on the basics and fundamentals, but also forward thinking in a strategic manner to uh, also uh, reap some benefits and again create world class cities. But uh, something else that was reflected and came out from the Afri City Summit, Mr. Mayor, was the level of confidence that your peers have in you by uh, electing you as a nominee uh, for presidency for the uh, UCLG. Congratulations on that. And walk us through uh, what fundamentally this means, given the fact that you'll be representing the African continent on the world stage? Well, thank you very much. I think that uh, it, we're in a unique position be because uh, we're nominated by the Afri cities. So all African cities met and said that uh, they're nominating Johannesburg for presidency. I mean, we, we uh, uh, graciously accept it. Of course, it's a huge responsibility to lead all local authorities in the world mm. uh, to be the face of all local authorities in the world and to speak on behalf of local government in the world system to represent local government in the United Nations system and all other institutions where local authorities need to be represented. And I think it is a vote of confidence in the work that we're doing in the city of Johannesburg. We, when we got to Paris, we got a lot of support from our European counterparts, our Canadian counterparts that were saying actually they were look, looking forward to Africa nominating Johannesburg. So we're quite excited that the world is acknowledging the work that we do and that we're able to make a, a contribution to the world. Mm. So clearly uh, living up to the promises you made in the State of the City address, making Johannesburg a, a world-class city, Mr. Mayor? Well, we are. We're trying very hard. I mean, uh, we, we think that uh, Johannesburg plays a unique position on the African continent. It is uniquely placed to 
to be the, the city, the anchor from which the rest of the continent can be able to grow. Mm -hmm. It is the center of commercial activity. It is the hub from which you are able to facilitate tr trade. It is the hub that holds the most advanced stock exchange on the African continent. Mm -hmm. And therefore you can enable trade and you can enable investment of African companies on the exchange. And we think that that gives us a unique position to contribute to the entire African continent. But we've also adopted a view that we have a contribution to make towards the development of the continent, towards the development of the global south. We've been very vocal on international platforms representing the African case. The fact that the Africa rising narrative has to move beyond narrative to implementation, that mm. we have the opportunity, we have the youthful population, we have the tribe, we have the resources to enable Africa to assume its rightful position in the world and that this is the time for Africa to assume that position, that position. But that depends on the nature and type of investments that we make on building the institutional capacity of our local authorities and governments and, on sh and, on sh and rather ensuring that we facilitate Africa's interface with the rest of the world. You mentioned the trip to Paris, uh, Mr. Mayor, and that also comes through in the Compact of Mayors, uh, which was recently signed, I understand, with the Mayor of uh, New York, uh, Mayor Bloomberg. Walk us through uh, the fundamentals of the Compact of Mayors and, again, what that does for the representation of the city of Johannesburg and the rest of the African continent when it comes to a partnership on a global scale. Well, Mayor Michael Bloomberg was appointed by UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon as a UN Special Representative or Special Envoy on climate change. He subsubsequently appointed me as his Africa contact point uh, on climate change and we've been working closely on issues related to climate change. And when he convened jointly with Mayor Hidalgo of, of Paris, the session of mayors on the, uh, throughout the world, it was a platform for us to facilitate that all local authorities are able to sign a compact of mayors. And this is a compact where mayors are able to place their own commitments. We can't just say to the world, we can't just say to business, we need a climate change deal, mm. but our local authorities are not implementing a climate change deal. So we are able to then say, we have our own deal, we have our own commitments, and we are able to measure each other. It's, it's on the basis of a peer review mechanism. Remember, we're not states, so we don't enter into a UN agreement sort of system. Okay. We local authorities that voluntar voluntarily act on matters such as climate change. We make our own commitments. Johannesburg has made a commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 65% by 2040. And we've, sta we've started implementing programs with regards to that. Uh, and the Compact of Mayors enables us to use, to use a common benchmark, a common set of indicators, so that in fact we're able to measure what all the mayors and all the cities are doing throughout the world. Mm -hmm. I'm happy you've brought up uh, uh, the uh, climate change issue because I understand that was uh, firmly on the agenda at COP21 given the uh, strong delegation that uh, you together with South other South African representatives went with uh, to Paris. But walk us through that theme again, the relevance and the importance of uh, climate change and uh, some of the initiatives that the city of Johannesburg will be doing in partnership with other stakeholders in order to uh, eliminate the threat of potential air pollution in South Africa? Well, you know, when the world met in Durban uh, at COP17, there were a number of decisions. And amongst the decisions that were made was that when we reach COP21, there should be a climate, climate deal in the world. And that climate deal should enable all in the world to make their commitments and the necessary investments to, towards mitigating the impact of climate change, but also to adapt uh, to the realities of climate change. Uh, we're quite excited about the extent to which there's been progress uh, with regards to the agreements. Of course, we left before that, but we've been actively involved. Mayor Ramakopa is the, of, of Tswani, is mm. the contact point for local authorities on climate change. He constitutes part of the national government delegation that's involved in the negotiations. Uh, and this, is, this enables us to have an entire government commitment 
as South Africa that says national, provincial, and local government are involved in the negotiations, are able to contribute towards the deal, and are able to make collective commitments in Paris on behalf of the people of South Africa about what we're going to do as a country, and that I think is a very important issue. You would know that South Africa has taken a view both as South Africa as part of the African continent, but also as chair of the G77 plus China, that it is important that we articulate a view, a view about common but differentiated responsibility to accept the reality that the industrialized world, industrialized at the back of uh, high levels of emissions, and that that reality impacts on us now, and they have so to say a disproportionate responsibility mm -hmm. towards climate change and they need to invest more money in mitigating climate change. Of course that's been a contentious issue in Paris but it's an important issue to articulate because otherwise you leave the rest of the de developing world behind if you reach an agreement that says we're all equal. The reality is that those that industrialized before us were able to reap the benefits of the fossil fuels so they need to pay more than we are, have to pay, to pay. And the reality is that we are a developing nation mm. like our peers throughout the world. We face challenges such as unemployment, inequality and poverty. And therefore, our contribution needs to be proportionate to our own contribution to the challenges. Exactly. And I take it we also need the buy-in of the residents and citizens, not only of the country, but the city of Johannesburg as well, to understand the re relevance and importance of climate change and the, the overall impact it could have on our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, Mr. Mayor. Indeed we do. I mean, um, uh, and that's why we initiated a project such as Eco Mobility Festival. It yes. had to do with a contribution towards climate change, what transport can, can do with regards to climate change. We had the buy-in of the bulk of Johannesburg residents that took up to the initiative of Eco Mobility. But we we're also having people contributing in initiatives such as recycling. We introducing different receptacles in different communities where if people are able to separate the waste so that in fact all the waste doesn't go to landfill. We're also having people installing solar panels voluntarily. Some of them to deal with issues such as load sharing, but the reality is that it's also a contribution mm -hmm. towards mitigating the impact of climate change. Some of these, particularly in poorer communities, are government investments in areas such as Alexandra where you have solar water heaters that the uh, government is initiating, but that also contributes towards mitigating the impact of climate change. So we need to build a partnership between ourselves and communities, between ourselves and business. South African business has been very active. If you look at the number of new buildings that are emerging, they meet green uh, building standards, meaning that our buildings are meeting the international standards to mitigate the impact of climate change. And I think that's an important contribution by South Africans. But we're also investing in initiatives such as our green buses that are intended to mitigate the impact of climate change. So we were able to go to Paris and say, these are the actions that we're taking, these are the initiatives that we're implementing in Johannesburg. So we're not coming here cap in hand saying we're not doing anything. We're coming here and we can demonstrate what we're doing, of course with more investments going down south to the African continent, we yeah. believe and are confident that we would be able to meet the requirements of the world to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and the impact of climate change. Right. On a lighter note, Mr. Mayor, you're still managing to use uh, eco-mobile facilities when you make your way around uh, the city of Johannesburg as well as Zanton CBD? Well, I do, <laughs> and actually, actually to tell you, I mean, it's much easier to come to Zanton uh, on the how train <laughs> than it is to come in a car. So uh, occasionally I do use eco-mobility coming into Sentin That's in true. particular. Yeah. And of course I'm a cyclist, so that gives me, that gives me the added benefit. Exactly. Leading by example, no doubt, on a lighter note. But to come back to the initiative that you mentioned, uh, going to Paris and not necessarily having a cap in hand, I understand that uh, the city of Johannesburg also recently won an award at uh, COP21 with regard to a green bond. Explain a little bit more about this particular investment vehicle and more importantly, the benefit it will have for the city of Johannesburg going forward. The green bond was celebrated internationally. We got the award from C4 to uh, nominate it. It, it was nomi rather nominated in a number of areas uh, because it was a unique product. It was the first green bond to be listed on an exchange mm -hmm. internationally. And 
the reality is that the world took note of the initiative that Johannesburg uh, undertook uh, together with its own business community because the reality is that it wouldn't have been a success if the investors didn't invest, if you didn't have the appetite from the debt capital markets to buy into the green bond, if you didn't have the buy-in from the JSE to co-design the green bond with us and we were able to share the experience. And the most important lesson that we were able to share with our peers was our ability to design the green bond jointly, the green bond jointly with the JSE because that design element was very important. Secondly, it was the ability to market it mm. uh, to the debt capital markets, to introduce a new instrument that people would be prepared to invest in. Uh, and people were prepared to put their money in the green bond uh, and ultimately th then to be able to mobilize the rest of the city departments because when you say I'm listing a green bond, it means that the projects that you're going to invest in are green. It forces, them, it forces an entire institution to go green because city departments now understand that in fact the projects we're going to submit need to pass the tick. Uh -huh. You need to get the tick that says it is green. Exactly. And people now know that in fact that's a particular tick in Johannesburg when you invest in capital infrastructure that says is it climate change resilient, is it green, is it contributing towards reducing greenhouse gas emissions, mm -hmm. uh, is it contributing towards adaptation. And adaptation is a particularly important issue uh, for us in the developing world which was introduced at COP17 when the world was in Durban because we thought it's an important issue that you include in the climate deal agreement adaptation as an indicator because the reality is that our city's abilities to be more resilient is, is affected by our abilities to invest. The mm -hmm. reality is that we don't have the resources that our uh, northern counterparts have and we need to be able to then have the resources to invest in areas such as how to expand the stormwater drainage system. Ah. So adaptation is not about, you're dealing with the reality that you already have climate change. So it's not about mitigating the impact of climate mm. change and stopping it. It's about saying, now that you have increased intensity of, of rain, now that you have more rain in Johannesburg, how do you adapt your infrastructure, mm. your infrastructure so that it's able to adapt to this new reality. It's those sort of issues where you need to adapt your infrastructure, your systems, your regulations mm -hmm. to accept the reality of climate change as opposed to the situation that almost all of us are, are dealing with. It's about converting lights, converting buses and so mm -hmm. on and so on so that you're able to reduce the impact of climate change and that's been an important issue. Exactly. Mr. Mayor, you've certainly highlighted the uh, milestones that we've managed to achieve as a city of Johannesburg when it comes to a continental as well as global sphere. But in January of next year, we're also heading up to the World Economic Forum, which will be held in Davos in Switzerland. Uh, walk us through the relevance of the city of Johannesburg on that platform once more. And if you'll make, be making your way as well to the uh, IC uh, Alps uh, to uh, share your view and the commitments again with uh, some of your global counterparts. Well, Johannesburg has had the privilege to be invited as amongst the cities that contribute towards uh, uh, the World Economic Forum. And the benefit of being in such a platform is the ability to build a relationship with business and to talk about the future of the world economy. Mm -hmm. Johannesburg is a major economic, economic center. It is the epi epicenter of economic activity on the African continent, and we're able to make a contribution. And more and more, Davos is taking a, a view of bringing in local authorities and saying, how do we get local authorities involved in the conversation and in the agreements that are made? And those agreements enable us to build a relationship with business. And we've been able to, to benefit from participating at Davos. We've been able to build the networks uh, that are necessary to deal with uh, the challenges that we have. You know, the program that we launched with regards to youth enterprise development, Bulinde mm. Lechosi, is a program that was inspired amongst others by Davos. It was a partnership that was initiated that said, how do we build a partnership between business and government that enables youth to be funneled through uh, into a set of opportunities, opportunities that upgrade their skills, upgrade their capacity, makes them job ready, uh, and enables them to access economic opportunities. So it is those sort of uh, uh, 
interactions that inspire and inform the work that we do. But also it is at Davos that we build a relationship with the Oxford Martin Group uh, that was looking at future generations and they published a report with regards to future generations uh, and what needs to be done and they published a report, a, a, a section of that report dealt with building a relationship between uh, tw 20 countries, 30 enterprises, multinationals and 40 cities that would contribute towards mitigating climate change and mm -hmm. Johannesburg has been identified as amongst those cities that would be able to make that contribution. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, just to close off with, uh, we know the challenges that we face uh, when it comes to the economy overall, uh, but fundamentally, does this mean that the initiatives and the gains that we've made on the continental sphere, be it the awards by AfroCities and COP21 and the partnerships uh, with the, the Compact of Mayors, that fundamentally, despite the tough environment, the city of Johannesburg is doing a good job and will continue to be a leader at a world-class city? It, it means that it means that uh, we're able to deal with the issues that confront us as a city. We said that we need to build a city that is sustainable, resilient. Uh, and when we talk about resilience, it's about the ability to to be able to absorb the pressures th that you face, whether these are economic shocks, whether these are shocks with regards to water supply systems, mm. electricity supply networks, and the way in which, in which we've been investing in our infrastructure, ranging from our smart meters to mitigate uh, uh, load shedding to uh, the water resilience that we have to uh, investing in our highways. We're now focusing a lot of our investments on our bridges and on our highways so that we're able to create more reliability on the highways and pro pro provide the infrastructure that, that's necessary to propel our economy. Johannesburg is a city that uh, focuses on those sort of issues that supports its economy and its people. Exactly. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for your time today and uh, reminding us of the strides and achievements that we've made as the city of Johannesburg and uh, that fundamentally we are again uh, leading the realm when it comes to our continental peers and the global partnerships that we form. Thank you so much. Well, that does bring us to the end of this discussion. Do join us again next year when we'll put the spotlight on the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. A big thank you once more to the Executive Mayor of the City of Johannesburg, Mr. Mayor Park Stau, for joining us today and sharing his insights with us. But from me, Gugule Tutele, and the team, it's goodbye for now. <laughs>